Welcome back to Amino Acids Names Explained. Peptide bonds, abbreviations, and single letter codes. As the 20th century dawned, almost all of the 20 amino acids were discovered. At the same time, the link between amino acids and proteins were finally taking shape thanks to the discovery of the peptide bond. In 1901, English biochemist Frederick Gallen Hopkins and Sidney W. Cole discovered that using the enzyme trypsin could enhance the hydrolysis of proteins. Trypsin itself was named after its method of discovery when it was rubbed out of the pancreas using glycerin. The root trip comes from the Greek word trebian, meaning to rub. Using this new tryptic digestion, Hopkins and Cole isolated a novel compound from caseins, the proteins found in milk. They mixed the compound with glyoxalic acid and then slowly titrated it with a concentrated sulfuric acid solution. The reaction between the two layers formed a reddish purple precipitate called tryptophan. The name tryptophan is a portmanteau of trypsin and the Greek root phanin, which means to show. This reaction will be used to indicate or to show the presence of proteins in solution. The results from triptych digestion was a clue to how proteins and amino acids were related. In 1802, German chemist Franz Hofmeister deduced that trypsin must have been acting on one of the bonds linking proteins together. Through the process of elimination, he concluded that the enzyme must have to attack the amino carbonyl peptide bonds. Peptide comes from the Greek word peptos, meaning digested, and was derived from the enzyme pepsin, which is responsible for digesting protein. In 1921, American bacteriologist John Howard Mueller used the established triptych hydrolysis method to isolate a new compound from caseins. He found that bacteria grown with commercially available amino acid mixtures weren't as viable as the cultures grown in the hydrolytic products. He therefore concluded that there must have been an essential amino acid missing from the commercial source, meaning that the compound couldn't have been synthesized by the bacteria itself. The chemical formula wasn't discovered until 1924 by a Japanese researcher named Suzuki Odake. He published the correct formula and chemical name gamma methyl alpha amino butyric acid. Methionine, therefore, was a shortening of this name with the added ene at the end. Finally, we come to threonine, the last amino acid to be discovered. In 1936, American biochemist William Cumming Rose and e. Curtis E. Mayer discovered the amino acid in a similar way to John Howard Mueller. In one study, he fed rats a cocktail of the 19 previously discovered amino acids and observed the rats losing weight in comparison to those fed with lysates of caseins. He concluded that another essential component was missing. Through an exhaustive series of experimentation, Rose and Mayer were able to isolate and then crystallize the missing component. He named the compound alpha amino beta hydroxy N butyric acid. The name threonine comes from the compound threonic acid, which in turn got its name from the four carbon sugar threos. These three chemicals share a chemical structure wherein two central carbons each branch off with a hydroxyl group N or an amino group in a syn configuration. This naming of bond orientation merits its own video for another time. In 1984, the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry and the International Union of Biochemistry held a joint commission to standardize the abbreviations of amino acids into a three-letter format. 
In the past, scientists have arbitrarily shortened amino acid names for ease of writing. Generally, amino acids were short written using the first three letters of their names, but there were still irregularities. Similar sounding names like glutamate and glutamine will be differentiated with epithets. While glutamic acid received the basic blue abbreviation, glutamine had NH2 added at the end. Other amino acids like isoleucine were shortened to four letters rather than three, and the abbreviations for tyrosine and tryptophan were ambiguous because both names started with the same three letters. The Joint Commission standardized all abbreviations into a single three-letter nomenclature that we still use today. Abbreviations with epithets would change their last letter to reflect their chemical identity, and four-letter abbreviations would be trimmed. The commission also disambiguated tryptophan's abbreviation by replacing Y at the end with a P. The single-letter coding system was the brainchild of American physical chemist. Dr. Margaret Bell Oakley Dayhoff was a pioneer in the field of bioinformatics. She championed the use of computer modeling to compare protein sequences across the species. In 1966, Dayhoff published a book containing 65 known protein sequences. To reduce the file size of these sequences, she shortened the names of each amino acid into unique single-letter codes using certain guidelines to aid in memorization. The majority of the amino acids used the first letters of their names, either because their names were unique or because they were frequently found in protein sequences. Arginine, phenylalanine, tyrosine, asparagine, and aspartic acid all use letters that are suggestive of their pronunciation. The remaining amino acids have their own arbitrary rules from having a letter in its name to merely using the next letter available in the alphabet. The story of amino acids is really the story of marrying biology to biochemistry. From Charles Darwin's work on the origins of species to Gregor Mendel's experiments with hereditary traits, it was clear that something carried information from one generation of organisms to the next. In 1953, with the help of Rosalind Franklin's X-ray crystallography, James D. Watson and Francis H. C. Crick were able to tease out the double helical structure of DNA, the hereditary material in all living things. However, the link between DNA and hereditary traits wouldn't be solved until the genetic code was deciphered and the role of amino acids and proteins was better understood. Next time on Biochemo Physio, we will explore the, how generations of scientists worked to tease out what Francis Crick called the central dogma of molecular biology. <laughs>